Welcome to the Auto Parent Podcast with my mom. Hello, hello, and welcome to the Auto Parent Podcast, episode 33. It is so good to be back with you on the airwaves today. I hope that you are having a good week so far. Um, I have so much to tell you and I'm so excited. The first thing I want to tell you is that you are absolutely 100% a million times not going to want to miss our next episode. Don't get me wrong. I hope you stick around for this one because it's going to have some good stuff. But episode 34 is going to knock your socks off. And I'm not just like saying that. And trust me, I'm not overselling it. I have been so excited to release this episode since we recorded it. And I cannot wait for you to find out who our special guest is and what we talk about. It's amazing. Did I mention it's going to knock your socks off? Because it's going to knock your socks off. So I want to see you back here, same time, same place, next week for sure. Got it? Got it. Good. All right. Well, let's get into this episode, shall we? Because this one should be great as well. I want to just start it off with a bang. I already teased this on social media because I was like, when this happened, I was like, this is absolutely going to be my parenting fail for the week. So just enjoy the next minute of me telling you how I'm parent of the year. So... <laughs> Cash has been so excited for school. He had orientation for school on Friday where they went for like a half day and did kind of like a mock day for the kids and got them used to everything for kindergarten and first graders. So he, he's been so excited, so excited. He wakes up every day like, is today the day I get to go to school? No. Is today the day I get to go to school? No. And so I, you know, was like, you will have to wait until Monday. That's when you go back to school. So Monday came around, he woke up, he was so excited, he got himself dressed, he had already picked out which parts of the uniform he wanted to wear, I had made his lunch the night before, like, we were firing on all cylinders. The younger one got up, got himself dressed, like, we, it was a morning like no other morning I have ever experienced in the Van Beer household. We were out the door early and ready to go, I pull up to the school and I'm like, Huh. Curiously, there is no one here. So we're either super early or we're late or some I'm like missing something. So Cash is like, what's going on? Like, why is nobody at school? And I'm like, I don't know. Why is nobody at school? And then I looked at the date. And I realized (laughs) that for weeks Everyone had been asking me, when is Cash's first day of school? And I said, four weeks. His orientation day is on the 20th. His first day of school is August 24th. August 24th. August 24th. It had been beat into my brain. And I looked at my watch, and the date was August 23rd. (laughs) I mean, who starts school on a Tuesday, number one? Number two... I don't know why they didn't ask me what date it should be, because I would have told them it should have been the 23rd. And number four, I don't know why they went with the date that they published everywhere. I mean, that seems a little crazy. Why wouldn't you want to keep us on our toes? I don't know, (laughs) y'all. The thing that made it so bad was not even that that everything had gone smoothly and that we had gotten out the door and like we got all the way there and had to turn around. Although I physically hate having to turn around. That wasn't the bad part. The bad part was that I had been hyping him up for school (laughs) and he was so excited. You should have seen the look on his face. I spent the next hour apologizing to him. The next hour apologizing to him because he was so excited. So that's my fail. I'd be curious to know if any of you have one that's on that level because I'd love to hear it. As we're starting back to school and and parents are trying to figure out all of the school stuff and the school supplies and the timing and the, oh my gosh, it's a lot. So if you're struggling and if you're failing, just know that I am right there with you. Okay, so how about a confession for this week? 
My confession really has nothing to do with parenting because y'all already know that I like get the kind of chocolate that my kids don't like on purpose, that I tell my kids that certain restaurants are closed when it's raining, that, you know, the list goes on and on. (laughs) So this confession is a little bit different. Just bear with me. So I really love podcasts, obviously. Hello. But most of the time I'm listening to the West Wing podcast. And the reason is because I'm obsessed with the West Wing. I think it's the best television show that's ever been made. And I would love to argue with somebody about it. Please come for me about the West Wing. But anyway, it's so good. And I've obviously watched it all the way through dozens of times and I'm now listening to the podcast for the first time, which is great. But that starts to get a little bit like Okay, all I'm thinking about when I'm not thinking about work or my kids or my family is West Wing. So I'm like, okay, I needed a little bit of a break. So I ventured out and y'all, I started listening to this podcast on the rise and fall of Mars Hill. And if you aren't familiar with Mars Hill, Mars Hill is a church that was started by Mark Driscoll in Seattle, Washington. And it is, it's a thing. So what I'm going to invite you to do is Google it because I don't have the space nor the time nor the energy to talk about it here. But I can't stop listening to this podcast. And what it did was it sent me down a really dark hole. And so my confession just is that like I've been wrapped up in like a really dark hole of evangelicalism for like, I don't know, the past couple of weeks. And I don't know how to get out. Like I was listening to some of his sermons the other day and I've got to stop. This person, Mark Driscoll, is super problematic. And so anyway, not to make any kind of judgment or claim about his ministry and life and whatever, just that I've been listening to this podcast that's investigative journalism by Christianity Today. And it's just sent me to a really dark place (laughs) where I don't like being. So that's my confession. And sometimes to pull myself out of that place, I just have to watch West Wing. So yeah, there it is. All right, let's do a parenting win, shall we? I, I mean, here it is. Here it is. Riggins has pooped in the potty five consecutive times. This is a huge deal. He has been pee potty trained for like what feels like almost a year. But this child has been one of those kids that poops and has to like go into a corner and hide behind something. Or like he doesn't want to see you to see him straining. So he'll like go into the closet or he just is a disappear kind of pooper. And so it's been so hard to get him to even think about potty training with the number two and uh, I just decided that we would go uh, go the full naked route. I don't know any, if anybody's done this full naked route potty training before, but the kid already likes to be naked, so why not? Uh, so we did that, and we, <laughs> we had a moment the other day where he was just, like, standing there, and you could tell, like, he was shaking. He was like, I'm going to poop. I got to poop. And <laughs> he was begging for a diaper, and I was like, no, no, we're going to poop in the potty. And he was like, no, I'm going to poop on the floor. And I was like, oh, boy, if you try it. And I was like, I'll put you on the toilet. And when dad gets home, he'll give you a dollar. And he sat on the toilet. He pooped in the potty. He was so proud of himself. That's the thing is like, you know, it's always borderline. Like, is the kid going to be traumatized or triumphant? Hashtag traumatized or triumphant. I just came up with that and I think it's brilliant. And so anyway, he was triumphant and I was so, so proud. And it's a huge, huge moment. It's a huge moment because this is the last kit. And you know what that means when those diapers go away? Ooh, huge. So I celebrate that today. I would love to hear some of yours. This has been a segment called Parenting Fails, Confessions, and Wins. Just a reminder, you can submit those to the podcast. I've been getting some rumblings from some listeners this week that some of you have some fails, confessions, and wins that you want to share with the podcast. I am so excited to receive them, and we'll share them on the pod. You can send them to us via voice memo. I would love to hear your voice and to bring you on the podcast to share your fails, confessions, and wins, or you can just type them out to us on Instagram and Twitter. And now it's time to do a little something different. Now it's time. 
time for our Get Real segment, where each week we take the lectionary passage and get real. So speaking of something different, I thought we would do something different. The lectionary text for this week, or at least the epistle reading, is Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 20. And this past Wednesday, I was the presider at Evensong, and I wrote a little bit of a homily for this particular text that feels so important right now that I thought I would share that with us. So um, let's read the text from Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 20. Here it is in the New Revised Standard Version. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of the Lord's power. Put on the whole armor of God so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God so that you may be able to withstand on that evil day and having done everything to stand firm. Stand, therefore, and fasten the belt of truth around your waist and put on the breastplate of righteousness as shoes for your feet. Put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all of these, take the shield of faith, which you will be able to quench all of the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the spirit at all times in every prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert and always persevere in supplication for all the saints. And the author says, pray also for me so that when I speak, a message may be given to me to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it boldly as I must speak. There's a theologian whom I love who says that if he were to rename the Bible, he would call it Welcome to the Struggle. And it's not hard to see why. The scriptural story begins in chaos, which is then called into creation and given the gift of covenantal relationship, which then falls into crisis necessitating more covenants, plural, because you know our people of faith tended to want to drive in the covenant lane but would often get distracted and swerve into the crisis lane where we would try but fail to avoid kings and conquering and exile and power grabs and innocent death and other embodied traffic cones in our story. And it's not as if the road workers slash mouthpieces of God didn't try to warn us. They did with their signs and with their shouts. But alas, we continued. This is, of course, when Christ incarnated. And after following Christ and living alongside Christ for many years, another crisis happens. And from the life, death, and resurrection of Christ comes the creation of the church and thus a calling to go into the world and call more disciples. And it's a struggle. And this goes on forever and ever as it is folded into the already and the not yet of the coming reign of God. So I don't know. The Ephesians invitation to suit up in armor makes a little bit of sense. What do the Ephesians, though, need to be prepared for? The author says to stand against. You might say to stand firm. An invitation to discard flexibility, malleability, and bendability as a virtue and to prepare and brace for the ensuing struggle, whether it be a struggle of mechanics or systems or whether it is internal or external or of cosmic proportions, preparation is key. Because if we don't have the right tools or mindset or training or connectedness to community, instead of standing firm, we might just get stubborn. And that's different. Standing firm gives the struggle meaning and purpose. Stubbornness gives the opinion about the struggle meaning and purpose. 
I need to say that again. Standing firm gives the struggle meaning and purpose. Stubbornness gives the opinion about the struggle meaning and purpose. So the author here is saying, look, it's a hard road ahead. And look behind you. It was a hard road back there too. But we have this letter. We have this time where we are safe, where I can offer you something in the midst of the struggle. You may be weary, beaten down, blown a million directions by the wind, persecuted, wanting to quit. You may be sick, tired, hot, or otherwise. Here are some tools, some training, a reminder that you are not alone. You have one another and you have a God who is actively working everything out now in the midst of this struggle take a foothold and stand for something don't become bitter don't become stubborn will something stand against evil stand for something good and not just the opposite of evil stand for something good in the created sense something holy and holy good will something now is the time to will something a true and present calling also so what can we will into existence together faith god i don't know about you but i need more of that right now hope yeah give me some of that too i'm tired are y'all tired Do you need some strength as we come upon another school year where we are unsure of what is going to happen? Do you need some strength? Do you need some courage? Faith, hope, strength, belief, trust, courage, whatever it is that we need is something that we can pray toward. We can send our energy toward. We can find a foothold in and we can stand firm in. So can we kiss our cynicism and stubbornness goodbye for the sake of one thing? Can we covenant together to will one thing into existence that is good? Can we stand up I know it's been a while. I know we've been beaten down. We've encountered more loss and grief and bad news and horror this week than many have seen in a lifetime. But is there anything within our bones that would rattle and call us to find a foothold and to stand? Something that is eternally good, a kind of soul food, something that will nourish us for the journey ahead for the rest of however long this wilderness is. Manna will not do it this time we need something anything to sustain us what can it be I'm feeling the spirit move in this moment and I want to say let's just take a moment and think about actually answering that question what can it be What do we need to will into existence? What do we need to find a foothold in? Is there anything that can help us stand up? May it be so in the name of Jesus. You know, when we moved into our new apartment, There are two pools. There's a bigger pool that's deeper. There's a little pool for kids. And when Riggs approached the smaller pool for the first time, he had never encountered a pool that was his size. So he put on his life jacket. He got into the water. He kind of got a little bit overwhelmed and started floundering and moving his arms and got a little bit a little bit scared and didn't know what to do and couldn't find me. And I was just thinking he doesn't know he can stand up. And I took his head 
and I put my hand under his chin and I lifted his chin and I said, Riggins, look at me, look at me. You can stand up. You can stand up. He just didn't know. He didn't know that he could stand up and maybe some of us don't know that we can stand up. But imagine me taking my hand and putting it on your chin and lifting your head up to look at me. You can stand up. You can stand up. And you know, standing up, it didn't actually make all of Riggins' pain go away. What it did was it gave him some courage to try some new things, and that caused him to get a little bit hurt. He skinned his knee. He slipped and fell. But he knew, he knew that no matter what happened, he could stand up. And the same is true for us. So imagine... Imagine God covering you with God's love and grace, with a blanket of comfort and saying, I'm here. Find a foothold. We'll do this together. May it be so. In the name of the one holy, true source of comfort and life in the world. May it be so. I've been your host, Pastor KC. You can follow me on Twitter at RevKCBC. Join us next week, same time, same place. You can find out more information about Foundry United Methodist Church by visiting our website, www.foundryumc.org. If you're specifically looking for information about our family ministries department or our offerings for parents, you can find those at www.foundryumc.org slash family ministries.